Dear Diary, thank goodness the tournament is over. Now it's time for a picnic. Hey guys, it's Coffee. Welcome back to Asagao Academy. This pretty much says it all. Um, last time we won the tournament. So Hana became a member of the Neural Boost Club, and I think this might be the last episode of this route because um, all we have left to do is go to the picnic. And let's hope we don't mess anything up this time. Okay, so let's continue. With that in hand, I rose early and got ready for the picnic. Maya was still sleeping. The tournament took place the same day as one of her biggest games, and I doubted she would bother getting out of bed before noon. Shane knocked, right on time as always. Just before I went to the door, I passed my new normal boots jacket. With a grin, I slipped it over my shoulders. The newest member of the Normal Boots Club. Hey. I see you're up on time. Yeah. Of course I am. Ready to go? Yep. I even remember to pick up our sandwiches. My heart stopped as I turned to the basket in my hands. <gasps> I forgot. Calm down, Hana. I've got them. He packed the sandwiches on top of the basket, then took it from me with an easy grin. Let's get going. The day wasn't as warm as I would have liked, but at least it was sunny out. The weather report was right for once. As Shane and I made our way to the picnic field, we traded jokes and comebacks. I prepared for today. I was definitely going to impress him. Okay, okay, so have you heard this one? Did you know? In the 1999 game, The Tour of Worlds, hackers have been able to dismantle the code in the game to extract symbols. <laughs> oh yeah, that was actually in Tour of Worlds too. Jeez, fine. But. Did you know they recently cryptographed the symbols and found their- they formed a secret phrase? Really? <laughs> it said, I bet you can't decode this. Shane made a noise akin to something coming out of a horse. Dicks. What's even the point? <laughs> I know, I wanted it to be something more meaningful. It's by Sand Tomb Studios, right? Terrible. <laughs> Though, good fact, I didn't know that. I beamed, happiness blooming within me. Hey, hey, don't let it get to your head. Hey! Does this spot look good? Anywhere is fine. It's up to you. Let's set up over there, then. I set the basket down in the grass, and Shane hung the pink blanket over his arm, reminiscent of a butler. Can you lay the blanket down while I get the plate set up? It was colder than I imagined it would be, but I spent so long preparing that there was no way anything, could, anything big could go wrong. I should be more confident in myself. That's what I thought, right as I pulled six spoons out of my basket. There was- there were only supposed to be two. Uh... Something wrong? Shane flapped the blanket open. We watched it float to the ground like a butterfly. <gasps> yeah, actually. There are six spoons in here. Shane shrugged. So? No, you don't understand. There are six spoons. That means... My hands searched the rest of the basket, almost frantically. Uh... That means there are no forks. That's it. We can make do with it. 
We don't have many fork-worthy items anyway. He sat down and started helping me unload the basket. Didn't we, didn't we have my double check our basket though? I pulled a, I put out a hand to stop him. No! I need to check if anything else is wrong. My voice wavered, but only slightly. Shane sighed and reached behind him. Out of his backpack, he pulled a fork. I brought this just in case. In case what? <laughs> in case. You can use it. I... Alright. Thanks. I accepted the fork, but still. It wasn't that I needed a fork, it was that I forgot it in the first place. I tried my best to push it out of my mind, taking our sandwiches from the basket. I might have messed up, but at least I knew they were these were good. Shane helped me make them after all. Turkey and avocado for me, ham and cheese for Shane. As I relished in my first bite, I tried not to worry. Shane was right. It wasn't a big deal. The cool breeze invigorated me, and I decided that I was going to have a good time no matter what. Hey. How's the sandwich? Good. I smiled, covering my mouth in case there was something in my teeth. As I did, a small wind picked up. It was a chilly wind, and I shivered. Then a drop of water hit my glasses. Oh no. Is it... raining? Shane paused mid-chew, putting his palm into the air. I don't feel anything. Like him, I gazed up again. There were some clouds, but they are mostly the fluffy white ones. <laughs> right, I need to calm down. But it was hard to stay optimistic at this point. Shane must have noticed the look on my face because he slipped his hand into mine. <laughs> I smiled at the ground, willing my palms to stay dry. Uh... Sorry if my hand is sweaty. We were worried about the same thing. A devilish idea came to mind, and I did my best to hide my grin. It feels like you just wash your hands and barely dried them. <gasps> Shit. He released his already loose hold and tried to wiggle out of my grasp, but I held on. Nope. Don't worry about it. Really. A cold drop hit the top of my head and I looked up. Dark clouds were moving in fast above us, like God drawing a blanket over the sky. Another drop splattered against my cheek. No. Looks like it's gonna rain. No! Th the weather report said sunny all day! Well... Sometimes those can be wrong, Hana. I let go of his hand and held my palm toward the sky, daring another drop to fall. Shane's eyes were on the sky as well. Weather reports aren't always accurate. The dark clouds pillowed above us, but I still refused to believe it. Shane put his hand out again for me to hold. Let's just go back to the dorm. We can have a picnic another day. It's not a big deal. That's not the problem. I know we can have another picnic any day, and I know I can make more fish sticks and crumpets and- <gasps> Crumpets, you still on about that? <sighs> I just wanted one thing to go right, Shane. Just one thing. Everything I've tried to do for you, with you, ends up a total mess or almost killing you. Maybe some of it was bad luck, but after a while, the only conclusion was that I was the problem. A gust of wind blew through. Several droplets landed on me, dotting the lenses of my glasses. Shane seemed at a loss, and I didn't blame him. 
Not only was the picnic being ruined by rain, but now I was ruining it with my stupid emotional outburst. And now I'm making it even worse. My voice cracked. Hana. The dam broke. My tears fell freely, as did the rain, right on cue. Shane put a hand around my shoulder, around my shoulders, but even though bleary eyes, I could see his jacket getting wetter and wetter. I shrugged off his touch. From the first moment you met me, you absolutely hated me. When I wanted to join the club, you warned everyone against me. When I was asked to be in the tournament, you told me I couldn't do it. I made those crumpets. Those damn crumpets. The last thing I wanted was to cause you pain. The soporific skies seemed to be emptying out all they had at this point. Maybe you don't hate me, but... Shane raised an eyebrow at me. Rain dripped off his nose. And this might not have been true, but... Hana. He said it like a warning, like he wanted me to spit it out. I balled my hands up into fists, gathering all of my courage. I was finally going to tell him. I felt like I was just a replacement for Emily. Shane stared at me in shock. I would have thought time stopped had, had droplets of rain not continued dripping off his hair. He was so taken aback that I faltered. Was I wrong to feel this way? No. You aren't. But... No buts, Hana. He stepped closer to me. We were only a few inches apart now. You're more than anything I could have asked for. Could have hoped for. Emily was holding me back, and I her. You helped me bloom. With another step, he closed the distance between our soaked lips. The flood in my mind cleared, and a bed of flowers burst to life in its place. I instinctively leaned into it, and at, the, at that moment, feeling protected from the entire world. Shane brought a hand to my neck and pulled me closer, until our soaked garments were one. Finally, he pulled away, his thumb resting on my jawline. Beads of water hung off his eyelashes. I do like you, okay? You. It's just hard for me to show it. The darkening skies were interrupted by a clap of thunder in the distance, for an instant illuminating us both in a flash of white light. This is still, still so scary for me. He was smiling so sincerely that it was hard for me to look at him. But I know I'm okay, because it's with you. I, I like you too, but you knew that already, didn't you? He smiled sheepishly and nodded. Most of his year was spent trying to ignore that fact, probably. Shane glanced at the sky, then turned to his magical backpack. Oh. He unfolded an umbrella above us, a gentle smile on his face. You... I figured you might forget something like this. I really wanted to kiss him again. I put my hand to his face and moved forward, our lips connecting a second time. I thought this would happen at the flower festival. <laughs> really now. I completely forgot you were going to draw me. He kept saying things like, are you ready? And are you okay? It was suggestive, all right. <laughs> Shane laughed as I imitated his low, sultry voice. Sorry it took so long. 
His apologetic smile warmed the depths of my rain-soaked heart. He put a hand outside of the umbrella, shaking his head. How about we get back to the dorms? I nodded. It was getting cold in these clothes. He held out his free hand and I took it again, this time with no doubts in my mind. I giggled to myself the whole way back. Okay, this, this better be a good ending. Things are going way too well for me to mess this up now. <laughs> we got to the dorm. The rain, the rain had already darkened the sky to the point where I couldn't tell whether it was day or night. You're not doing anything else tonight, right? <laughs> no, I'm really tired. <laughs> Crying your eyes out usually did a number on a person. I think Gerard is going to be at John's until late tonight. If. He trod off, eyes glued to the floor. I leaned forward to catch his attention, hands clasped behind my back. If. Well. I got the new Dog Cop movie. <laughs> Are you inviting me to watch a movie in your room after co ed times are almost over? I'm trying. And you think I, Hana Mizuno, the first new Normal Boots Club member in years, I'm going to risk detention for you. Shane gaped like a fish. Yeah. Well, you thought right. Let's go. I led the way, if only because I was already in front, and opened the door to his always clean room. Once again, I put my room to Shane. Shane went directly over to his spick and span bookshelf. He slipped out a yellow DVD, then handed it to me before grabbing his laptop. The cover of the DVD was a graphic design disaster. <laughs> the yellow background was so bright it was blinding, overlaid with a terrible red font. Drops of blood hung off the letters symmetrically and the main character on the front. It was a police officer with the head of a beagle. This doesn't look good. Shane crawled into bed next to me, pulling a light knitted blanket over us. I swallowed hard. Don't think about being in a boy's bed, Hana. You're just watching a movie. Yeah. Just a movie. Focus. It's going to be awful. Do you want to watch the first one? I shook my head. I never even heard of it. Shane didn't seem like the like one for indie films, either. Friend from England got me into them. I like one of the actors. Nothing happens in the first one, so you're not missing much. I looked down at the cover again, tracing the bloody two with my eyes. They couldn't even choose a German Shepherd? You know, like an actual police dog? Don't judge the dog by its face, Hana. I threw his pillow at him, which blocked, which he blocked with ease. His sly grin was interrupted by the telltale signs of an itch in the nose. <laughs> oh no, getting sick? I realized I was still holding the pillow as if I were to swing it again. I put it down. Shane winced, fingers pinching his nose. Maybe it's the dust. He eyed the pillow and the blanket we were sitting under. You know, if you want. If I want? I only tried once in this room. <gasps> Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> A blanket fort. That did not go where I thought it would. <laughs> Shane chuckled at my face. It is a little drafty in here. A pillow fort could be fun. <laughs> he lit up like a Christmas tree. I laughed. Well, get off then. Shane grabbed the blanket I was sitting on, a wicked expression adorning his face. Hmm. Don't. You. Dare. He pulled. <laughs> 
I rolled straight onto the floor, squeaking in surprise. Then I scrambled to my feet, face on fire. <laughs> Shane! <laughs> I threw my pillow as hard as I could at him, as he clutched his stomach, doubled over in laughter. He yelped a bit and clasped his right pinky, pure pain on his face. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Still clutching his injured little finger, Shane gawked at me. Did you just say shit? I covered my own mouth. I... guess I did. <laughs> I never heard you swear before. I mean, I recall Hana calling him a pizza shit, though. What have I done? Now that I thought about it, Shane swore a lot around me. I learned from the best. More importantly, your finger. Did I hurt it? He made a face and shook out his fingers again. No, I think the pillow just hit it wrong. Man, a broken finger because of a pillow. What? It's broken? No. No, I was exaggerating. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I rubbed my nose, eyes tearing up. Uh... I don't suppose you're allergic to dust, either. Not that I know of. Shane grit his teeth and looked around his room. I knew exactly what he was thinking. We were getting sick. At least it waited until after the tournament. Yeah, but exams are next week. Great. Stress settled like a cloud over us, but that was no good. I grabbed the blanket that Shane pulled out from underneath me. Where should I put this? Uh, the fort won't build itself. You know, since I only have one blanket, let's tuck it under Gerard's mattress. As Shane and I built the fort, memories flooded in from the, from the beginning of the year. I was a little upset and homesick, and Mai pulled together a fort in our bedroom. Shane hated me back then, but now, now I was making the fort with him. Yeah. Perfect. We stepped back to admire our handiwork, a single blanket hanging from Gerard's bed and clipped into two chairs. It'd be a lot more perfect if you had one, more than one blanket. Yes. I have a bunch of pillows. He pulled a second pillow from his bunk, immediately chucking it at me. Okay, I deserve that. Raising an eyebrow, I picked it up. Shane pulled another pillow from his arsenal, eyes glinting. He was no pillow fight casual. The battle was long and hard, small bits of fluff and feathers exploding from the pillows as we attacked each other. Finally, I was exhausted. Shane bopped me on the head with his pillow, and I was set off balance, falling onto his bed. <laughs> I couldn't stop the giggles from pouring out of me. You okay? Shane peeked inside the sheet curtain, and I stretched out his hand to help me up. I threw my pillow at his face. You worry too much. I smiled and laid back against the pillow. Oh. I shot back up and ran a hand over the back of my head. I looked behind me, spinning in my sitting position. My bow. Oh, I didn't even realize <laughs> that the bow is missing. Huh? She looks so weird without it. My bow, it's gone. I twisted every which way, panicking as I looked for the red ribbon. It's been gone for a few minutes. Really? And I didn't notice? I patted the back of my head again, as if it would suddenly reappear. Uh... I didn't think it was important enough to mention. It's important. Okay, well, let's look for it. Yeah, it has to be in here. It probably got knocked off when I was jumping around. We searched under the, under the bed, across the room, beneath the blankets, but nothing turned up. 
I forced myself to stay calm. I'll keep looking for it, but for now, maybe we should just forget about it. No! I shouted at him, and Shane's brows instantly knit together. Sorry, I mean, I, I need it for my luck. You're cute without it. His compliment bounced off me, ineffective. I needed my ribbon. Hey. If it's that necessary, I'll buy you another one. <sighs> Thanks, but I need to find this one. He blinked at me, then moved to the other side of the room to search again. I felt bad making Shane tear apart his room for me, so I tried to think of a joke. Why are pirates called pirates? Dang, I already regretted this. I don't know. Why? <laughs> B -b because they are... <coughs> Ew. <laughs> that was not a good joke. Sh Shane sneezed from under the bed. He slid out and looked at me from his position on the floor. What? Say that again. Couldn't hear. B because Never mind. He raised his eyebrows again. Hmm. I changed my mind. It was too painful. <laughs> He chuckled, then crawled back under his bed. I paused, taking another sweeping look on, around the room, then tapped him on the leg. Um. I think I'm going to give up, for now. What? Why? It has to be in my room somewhere. I'm too worried I'll to do it efficiently. And I felt bad for stressing him out. Let's just get my mind off it for now. Sure. He wiggled up from the floor and sat on the bed. Want to start dog cop then? Yeah. Shane patted the spot next to him, and I sat and say sink down to join him. I rested my head on his shoulder and yawned. <laughs> oh, but we haven't even started yet. Well. I was up all night setting up this picnic for you. <laughs> but I'm sure Dog Cop will wake me up. It sounds so exciting. Despite being so close to each other, and in his bed, Shane was almost completely fixated on the movie. He didn't move a muscle, just stared at the screen as though his life depended on it. It made me feel kind of bad, but he did mention he liked one of the actors. Oh no, I felt another, another sneeze coming on. <laughs> Shane sighed, reaching into the darkness and dropping a box of tissues in front of us. As we continued to watch, my neck started to hurt. I shifted a bit with the sniffle, trying not to disturb Shane too much. He let me adjust, his eyes glued to his laptop. I took this chance to sneak closer to him, closing the small distance left between us. I turned to face him, but he was already looking at me, and we both smiled. We weren't movie talkers. The dog cop, whose name I learned was Boulder, was traveling across Cal the California countryside. He was looking for his long-lost love, a miniature schnauzer. Or should I say, a, min a miniature schnauzer doctor. A dog doctor. A dog -ter? Named Peanut. I rolled my eyes. They embraced passionately at their reunion, talking about their future together. After the twelfth minute of this, Shane yawned. I nervously touched the back of my head again. Still no bow. So, you still think I'm cute? Yes. Of course. He turned to me, but kept his eyes on Mr. and Mrs. Dog for as long as he could. Maybe you should try different hairstyles. Find the one you like. But 
I do like it tied back, too. He shrugged, gaze flickering back to the touching scene on screen. Maybe I'll grow it out again. Again? It was down to my mid-back for most of my life. Until about a year before I came here, actually. What made you cut it? N nothing specific, it just sort of happened. Hmm, I don't believe that. He glared at me, and I knew that answer wouldn't fly with him. I didn't choose this hairstyle, per se. What? What, your, your dad? No. Then who? I sighed deeply, not wanting to spoil the mood with something like this. Well... Well, I was bullied for most of my life for my hair. Uh... We don't have to talk about this if you don't want to. I should have told you this sooner. Then maybe. I, I stopped, but Shane made a face. I bit my lip. Maybe you would have stopped targeting me because of my hair. Not that you still do, but you definitely did earlier in the year. Shane lowered his head, both in acknowledgement and apology. Okay, now I'm more curious. It was one of the biggest reasons I moved here. Shane quickly tapped the spacebar, pausing the dog's mid-frolic. Then he gave me his full attention. I guess it's story time. I invited my best friend over to a sleepover. Most of my former friend group abandoned me, but she was still there for me. I didn't even originally want to have the sleepover, but my dad insisted. He saw I was struggling and didn't know what to do. When she came, things were just like old times. She didn't mention any of what I was being accused of. I felt like maybe things would eventually get better. I fell asleep first. I woke up to the sound of scissors snipping. Michelle was holding pink locks of hair and laughing. My hair. She cut it all off. That would, That's fucked up. Wow. My dad was understanding. He kept telling me it was cute and everyone would like my new haircut. But I didn't go back to school after that. That's why my dad spent all his money to get me to Asagao. It was the only way I agreed to go back to school. Honestly, I didn't think I'd get in. The day before I left, I was still anxious about my hair. My dad came into my room with a red ribbon. He said it was my mother's. He tied up my hair for the first time in a long time. It felt cute. <laughs> you were always cute. <sighs> well, maybe, but I didn't feel that way. I was amazed I didn't cry, talking about all of this. It was the hardest few years of my life, but with Shane next to me, they didn't seem too terribly bad. Shane blinked at me for a few moments, then reached, reached to the side of his bed. He tossed a pile of papers onto my lap. I read the title, The Best Flower in the Garden. <gasps> what is this? I opened the first page. Inside was a watercolor comic about a boy and a girl. The girl had pink hair. She was standing in a plainly, with a plainly dressed boy who almost looked like Shane. They seemed to be friends. In the beginning, the boy was afraid to get close to the girl, whom I can now put a name to. Emma. Emma had bright beams of light coming off her, and the boy kept trying to reach the girl inside them, but couldn't. I skimmed through page after page, and soon the boy got his own beams of light, one by one, after spending time with Emma. On the last page, they were holding hands in a garden, rainbow lights coming off them both. Shane. 
Hana, I... I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I should never have judged you or made fun of your hair. Shane, it's fine. It's completely fine. You don't think the comic is weird? Of course not. It's beautiful. It really is. I look down at the cover in my hands, reading the title one more time. Remember when you told me, in the rooftop garden, that your name means flower? The most beautiful flower in the garden? Yeah. Of course. Shane pulled me into a hug, warm and comforting. I buried my head into his chest, inhaling deeply. He was wearing cologne. Oh. He stopped suddenly, pulling back. Something slithered out of the back of my jacket. My bow! It must have fallen down back there. See? You would have found it eventually. I quickly tied the ribbon back into my hair. How does it look? You look perfect. I buried my head into his chest out of pure relief. Thank you. Sincerely. Gerard is probably coming back soon, and it's past the hours I can be here. I didn't really want to leave and end this roller coaster of a day, but I could understand that he would want me gone. I wiggled around, trying to get to my things at the edge of the bed. But Shane wouldn't let me go. At least finish Dog Cop. I rolled my eyes, pretending to be mad. Shane saw through it, and I slouched back into his arms. And so he finished Dog Cop in silence. Boulder saved the world with his dog guns and crazy dog one-liners. He settled down with his now dog wife, Peanut, finding a cozy dog house in the American Midwest. The credits rolled showing both the names of the human body model and the dog head model. Boulder's Dalmatian sidekick's body was named Shane. I elbowed Shane to get his attention. Hey! Oh, look at his name! I didn't get an answer. I leaned over. Shane's eyes were closed. He was breathing softly, the deep breaths of the vulnerable. I too breathed deeply. Still mostly awake. The credits finished, and the title screen began again. I quietly closed his laptop and tried to get up. Before I could, Shane grabbed my waist and pulled me back. Hey. Tomorrow's Sunday. Gerard won't mind. I smiled. Could he tell this is what I wanted? Okay. I laid down next to him. Still have butterflies? <laughs> More than ever. Me too. If things could stay like this forever, I would be the happiest person alive. I snuggled into Shane's arms, and fell asleep much faster than I thought. Best end. Yes! Oh my god. Wow. Just, I- I was so worried about this because I did my reading uh, beforehand, like without spoilers or anything, and I read that this was a really hard route. So I was like so sure that even after, like, the picnic in the rain that something would go wrong. Wow. That was really interesting. I like that, like, unlike a lot of other, like, dating-based uh, visual novels, that some of the choices were really not straightforward at all. That And that it was more, like, not necessarily about, like, the best choice, but more like maybe what this person kind of wanted to hear, or what would be more sensitive to their emotional needs.
I love this. I might actually do another route. Actually, I might just go down the list of like those top three that I had in mind um, that I mentioned earlier. So yeah. I'm just gonna let this, these credits play. Oh, I guess there's another scene. Okay. Are you excited? Excited? Are you kidding me? I'm absolutely terrified. I've never been on a plane before, let alone flown 12 hours to the other side of the world. <laughs> Shane chuckled, taking my hands in his. You'll love it. Once you're in the air, you'll get all quiet, all the quiet time you want. And we'll be together. <gasps> but that means if we crash, I'll lose my life and the life of the person who matters most to me all in one go. Hmm, I guess there's nothing I can do to convince you. Shane leaned in and kissed me. As he did, my heart stilled. I lost myself in the comfort of his embrace. After a few seconds, he pulled away, a sly grin on his face. Feel better now? Maybe. I'll just have to kiss you every time you get nervous. You're so much work, you know that. I shoved him, not even wanting to have to hear it. You'll have to get used to having me around. We'll be sharing a bed after all. <gasps> Sh Shane! <laughs> I'm just saying, my family's house is shiny. And they don't pretend they like they don't know what young couples get up to. Shane! Shane grinned at, yet again at me. I'm just saying. The next day, I would be in England, eating dinner with Shane's family. Or, more likely, passed out from jet lag. He insisted that I meet his family before he graduated from the academy. I had no idea why, but I had my hopes. Still, no matter what happened or what adventures we faced, I knew I could do it. Because Shane was by my side. Asagawa Academy, Normal wow. Boots Club. And I guess that's it. To anyone that watches this far, thanks for joining me on this journey, and I will probably be back. I'm doing another route shortly. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>